commemorations have been held around the world on the first anniversary of Russia's invasion. Ukraine's allies have pledged fresh aid, including the United States. And joining me live is Republican strategist John Jordan. A very good morning to you, John. President Biden made a surprise visit to the Ukraine on the anniversary of the invasion. What did you make of that? I thought it was a very effective, um, a very effective act by President Biden. It, it sent shockwaves throughout uh, the Russian media and the Russian information space, and I think reminded the Russians or made very clear that uh, the West is in this for the long haul. Now, President Biden is being rightly praised for this, but at the same time, it wouldn't kill him to go to the U.S. border where we have fentanyl and uh, unchecked immigration, uh, illegal immigration happening, or to even go to uh, Ohio where the spill happened. So I think in fairness, President Biden should be praised for this, but um, a president should be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. It was an extraordinary, it was an extraordinary moment because so much went into it prior to him arriving, it would have been a lot of people working on it. And it's a real signal of total commitment from his administration. Yeah, it is. And that's, that commitment is largely bipartisan. I mean, the American people are behind this. I think support for this is finite and it needs to be wrapped up uh, perhaps as soon as possible with a Ukrainian in victory. But uh, the American people in general across the, par across the political spectrum are, uh, are supportive of our aid for Ukraine. John, there's been some critics. Ron DeSantis was one of them. Yeah, I don't agree with uh, Governor DeSantis on this. There is an element of both parties that is very isolationist that wants to question our aid to Ukraine and support that. There's people on both sides of the aisle that do that. Um, nobody's talking about a blank check. I think that oversimplifies this considerably. But war is a messy business. Yeah, you're sending a lot of weapons. And no, there's no U.S. troops there. And when there's no U.S. troops or administration there, yes, there are risks of corruption and all that, especially in that part of the world. Um, we did the same thing during World War II. You just have to fight the fight and uh, do the best you can in terms of making sure that resources are allocated proportionally, but you can't let perf uh, uh, perfection become the enemy of uh, good enough here. It's interesting because he's trying to position himself for a much higher office. He needs to be very careful in and around his rhetoric, doesn't he? Yes, uh, Governor DeSantis is a very thoughtful, smart guy. He's a naval officer, as I was. Um, he uh, he talked about a blank check, and nobody wants that. People want to make sure that the Ukrainians are using these resources uh, appropriately, and that corruption is in fact being rooted out in Ukraine. And it looks like President Zelensky has made meaningful steps in that direction. But there's a long way to go. Donald Trump had a good week. Yeah, I mean, he went to East Palestine, uh, you know, he stole the headlines. The administration really stepped on a rake with this whole uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, you know, sending them 20 days late. There's an outrage in that part of the country about the federal government's response. Pete Buttigieg's uh, visit there was, was, was a joke and it was a political disaster. Even if it had been on time, his press conference was a disaster. He was undercut by the chairman, the chairwoman of the National Transportation Safety Board. Um, this could be for President President Biden kind of the disaster that Hurricane Katrina was for President Bush uh, 43 in uh, Louisiana a few years ago. And it was interesting to hear Donald Trump and he, he doubling down on the whole uh, Russia invasion of Ukraine. He said this would not have happened if I was in charge. And that seems to be one of the things that he's really pushing and pressing at the moment. Well, yeah, he has a point there. Um, you know, the President Obama and, and then Vice President Biden refused to send Ukraine lethal aid or weapons during the entire Obama administration. And then during President Trump's presidency, and these are facts and this is verifiable, when he was being accused of being a Russian stooge and the, and the uh, you know, Russian collusion joke happened and the media was all on board with that, piled on that, never, never, never apologized or said we were wrong about that. Um, while that was going on, President Trump actually sent lethal aid to Ukraine. And you want to talk, and I'm a Russia expert. I speak the language, know these people very well, have studied them. If there's one, there's one of two, Two, the, one of two pain points in dealing with the Russians. One is undercutting energy prices, which is at the heart of their national economy. 
President Trump did that by expanding American domestic production and bringing oil prices down. That is a big deal to the Russians. And second, he sent lethal aid to Ukraine, which uh, Obama never did. So in terms of substance, in terms of really going after the Russians and sending Putin a message, Trump actually did that. And so he is kind of being vindicated right now. And no, um, in looking at how Biden abandoned Afghanistan and cut and run in the middle of the night in front of friend and foe alike, uh, President Trump wouldn't have done that. And President Trump had sent lethal aid to Ukraine. So President, former President Trump has a point here that no, it probably wouldn't have happened on his watch, but for the fecklessness and hypocrisy of the Biden administration. Yeah, he is, he is distorting history a little bit in some of his comments, but we don't have time to go there. Marjorie Taylor Greene has again publicly called for a national divorce between red and blue states. So there are loons on both sides of the political aisle. Here we had, for example, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the leftist, uh, extreme leftist from New York, going after the Japanese because they are insufficiently accepting of LGBTQ things to her liking. You have Marjorie Taylor Greene saying her goofy things. The thing is, yeah, there are loons on both sides of the aisle, and people need to realize this on both right, no matter which party you root for. But, um, you, you know, at the end of the day, what was concerning to me is that the media always jumps on when a Republican loon says something, and then they ignore it when a leftist loon says something. Like, for example, when Steve Scalise and the Republicans were shot at the baseball game, um, that got thrown under the cup. That was done by a leftist, a Bernie Sanders supporter, and that gets shoved under the rug. But yeah, Marty Taylor Greene said a loony thing here, and it's being jumped on by the media. But I wish the media would cover um, the loons on the left with the equal vigour. Yeah, these types of comments aren't going to stop. It's part of the colour, isn't it, of a democracy? And uh, it's, it's very interesting. We've got a year and a half, which is almost going to be like a, a movie to watch in US politics. John, I look forward to having a chat next week. Look forward to it.